What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review, and this time I'm going to be covering Wrong Turn, and I have a special guest. I'd like you to meet my young sister, Christina. Hello. We just got done watching Wrong Turn, a movie that we have been watching for the better part of, what, 17, almost 20 years? Believe it or not, this is, old, this is an almost 20-year movie. Oh, three. Yeah, I remember watching this, because I think mom, my mother, the mom bought this for me. Mm -hmm. And then me, you, Marie, and Joe used to watch it all the time. Yeah. 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 So, this, so this is a very entertaining slasher flick that's heavily inspired by The Hills Have Eyes. Though some say it is a blatant ripoff of The Hills Have Eyes. But that's up to your interpretation. But we're not going to compare, but we're going to try to look at this movie on its own merit. And by itself, Wrong Turn is a very entertaining movie. It has a very basic premise. These six friends get stranded. These six friends make a wrong turn, no pun intended. They get stranded, and they, and they get hunted down by this cannibalistic family in the woods. It's pretty basic. This movie is not trying to change the world or do anything like that. Mm -hmm. But for what, for what the movie does, it, it, it hits all the right beats. Right. You know, the characters, they're nothing spectacular, but the actors do a good job at making you care about them. They're average, they act like they're average people, which yeah. they are, and they feel like they do a good job doing yeah, that. You have, the movie's anchored by Desmond Harrington and Elijah Dusky, who play the characters of Chris mm -hmm. and Jess. Uh, those those two pretty much lead the pack, or like they co-lead the pack of friends, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, now, Chris meets these friends when his car pretty much breaks down in the middle of the road and again, he gets into a car accident. Mm -hmm. That's how he that's how he meets the, uh, the uh, Elijah Dusky and her band of compatriots. And of course, they go searching for help. They come across the wrong house, and mm -hmm. chaos ensues. And every and almost everyone gets knocked off in grisly, orderly fashion. So, we're just gonna go all around, tell you what we thought about it, and go from there. So, I'll let my sister here take the floor. So, overall, I think it's a great, a good movie. I like how it it gets straight to the point. Mm. You know, like kill. Let's go. Bang, bang, done. Doesn't oh, yeah. waste too much time. No, this is like an 80-minute movie. Exactly. So, like, it, it, it hits the ground running. It doesn't waste any time. And from that opening prologue, where those two uh, rock climbers get killed, it instantly okay. sets the tone. Okay, this movie's got this movie's going to be aggressive, and it's going to be at a go at a fast pace. And it doesn't stop from there. Yeah. Like, it doesn't take too long for the, for the cannibals to actually meet the six friends. Like, once they meet the six friends, it's, it's like a nonstop chase, which is good. Yeah. Like for a movie like this, you, it, story wise, it has nothing to offer, mm -hmm. and not only that, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna try not to compare it to The Hills Have Eyes, but I have no choice because <laughs> the, the the two movies are really are very similar to one another. Right. Yeah. But where The Hills Have Eyes has more interesting things going for it. Like a storyline. It, it has a storyline, but it, and it also parallels like the two. Like you gotta watch The Hills Have. I gotta show you Hills Have Eyes for you to understand the parallels that movie has. But this movie is basically the, uh, just picture Friday the 13th or something like that. Mm -hmm. Kids in the woods and they're going to run and chase. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to talk about the actors in this movie. So what do you think of the cast? Uh, I think the, the two leads, Chris, I don't know his actor. His uh, Chris, uh, Desmond Harrington. He, in the beginning... Very motionless. Wait, he's very stoked. It's very unfazed that he's yeah, yeah, yeah. just in a car accident. That's actually a big criticism that I have with his characters. That, in, like, when we first see him, he's very stoked. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it, like nothing phases this man. He literally just got into a car accident, and he's walking like he just locked his keys in the car. <laughs> like, dude, your car told. Everyone else is like panicking. You're like completely stoic. I think the other lead, Elijah Dushku, I like her. She's really good mm. acting wise. I see her in other films. So she's physically good. The stunts that right. was, she probably did. She yeah, probably like did them on her own. I like the two in this movie, but I, I feel like her acting was good. Maybe she was a little. I think for me, she was like a little flat in some scenes. In some scenes, yeah, and then she showed some emotion, yeah. more emotion than Chris ever did. <laughs> Actually, to me, when, when Eliza first, when Eliza first has a couple of scenes, it feels like she's reading off a paper. Yeah. Her lines feel very unnatural in the first half, mm -hmm. but as the movie progresses, she gets a lot better. Yeah. Then again, then again, I never really thought of Elijah as a, as a great actress anyway. I thought she was always okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite character in this movie is a character called Scott, but played by Jeremy Sisko. Oh, yeah. He's like the comic relief character. Right. But he's a very likable guy. 
is. And I like the relationship he has with his girlfriend, Carly, played by Emmanuel Tricray. And like when was, two yeah, when, when Scott dies, I was actually bummed out because I liked him. I actually wanted him to live throughout the, like more of the movie, especially once the one. At least die later or something. Oh yeah, at least have more of a heroic death. Because <laughs> his, his death is so lame. Yeah. Mean me. I do like the fact how he was like he was able to like distract the hillbillies. Yeah, he did. So he he kind of did have some badassery to him. Yeah. But come on, bro. He got shot in the back with bow and arrows. Yeah. I mean, without lame. I mean, speaking of which, this movie does have some pretty decent kills to it as well. Yeah. Uh, I think the most memorable one is when they dismembered one of those stoner, one of the friends, Francine, who yeah. was there with her boyfriend, Evan. Like, they, she gets mutilated hard. Like, they cut her to bits. And you see it, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the uh, aftermath, at least. Oh, yeah. But you know what they're but doing. But you see, like, flashes of it. Yeah, yeah. Like... The one thing that Rob Schmidt, who directed this film, what he did was that he wasn't, he wasn't exploitative with the violence. I kind of actually like that, because I don't like gruesome. So if you're someone who doesn't like gruesome, this movie is kind of for you, because they don't show everything. Yeah. But I mean, you know what's happening. I mean, there's certain, I mean, more or less you'll see the aftermath of yeah, that. Yeah, you'll, it comes you'll I mean, see gruesomeness. I mean, there are some kills you'll see, but they're not... Nothing like Saw. No. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there are some kills you'll see, yeah. but they're like... I guess sort of tamed. Right. Like the more, yeah. I think of all of the scenes, the most gruesome one you see is when the girl gets like chopped from like the, from her mouth down. Right. That's like the most intense thing in the entire. And movie. you you hear her body like Thug. falling through the trees. Yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. see like the aftermath, like the kid losing it. Like you don't see the kid lose his ear, but you see his severed ear. Yeah. And you, and you see the and like the other kid, we see like a guy get like a bow and arrow through his eye. Yeah. It's yeah. so, like you mostly see simple kills on the right. screen. On on the screen and then. The more brutal stuff, you see the aftermath, and it's left up to your imagination, which is actually better because your imagination is what can conjure up the most, most insane stuff. Uh, I think also, the so hillbilly family. The hillbilly family. Uh, now, this movie was produced by Stan Winston, and for those of you who don't know, Stan Winston is a very famous makeup effects artist. He did stuff like Terminator and Jurassic Park, Stan. so he is legit. When it comes to uh, when it comes to effects, and I think the effects in this movie are overall well done. I like the look of the hillbilly family; they all have a very distinct, grotesque look to them. To them, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say and again, personality traits. Personality traits, which is very similar to the Hills Have Eyes, because members of the hill, because the family in that, uh, the, the hillbilly family in that movie, all have distinct personality character traits, and this is no different. This one. With the more famous one from this movie being the Laughing Man, as I call him. Oh yes, the manic laughing. The <laughs> manic laugh, the that make that that manic laugh that whenever you see, you know something's going to go down. And he's enjoying it. Oh, that's what. That's Every what second of it. Oh yeah, but I, I want to get back to the human character because I want to reiterate that most of them they're not stupid. No. They're actually very resourceful. Yeah. Like, and I think a lot of that has to go with the character of Chris having like you know having uh, the movie references. Has, makes reference to him knowing stuff about like medical science and stuff mm -hmm. like that, so that makes him kind of resourceful. Um, Elijah Dusku, she did, she did, she doesn't come across as a damsel in distress until no. like the end of the movie. You can tell just by the way she dresses. Oh yeah, she's like a tomboy. Yeah. And, and when and when, they, and when and when they mm -hmm. fight back, they fight back. Yeah. And when they have to outwit, they outwit. So and, and it makes it and it works for me. Uh, yeah, so overall, you know, wrong turn. Is it a special movie? No. Is no. it a great movie? Absolutely not. Is it a very entertaining movie for the horror slasher genre? I think so. Like, even though I think this movie is a ripoff of The Hills Have Eyes, I do think it also pays tribute at the same time to The Hills Have Eyes. And you can clearly tell that Rob Schmidt is a fan of, uh, of Wes Craven and the movies of Wes Craven, in particular the, the, the Hills, movies like The Hills Have Eyes. So I think overall, as a grade, I'm gonna give it. I think I'm gonna give it like a uh, maybe between uh, a seven to an eight, like maybe seven. like a seven. Maybe seven point five. Seven point five at the most. So yeah, those are our thoughts on Wrong Turn. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I will check you back next time for more. Peace.